أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Oh Allah, bless those faces that are burnt by the heat of the sun. Oh Allah, bless those cheeks that place themselves on the grave of Hussein ibn Ali. Oh Allah, bless those hearts that are sorrowful for us. Oh Allah, bless those voices that are raised in agony due to our calamity. These are amongst the words that Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad and al-Sadiq salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi famously said regarding the zuwar of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. These visitors that come far and wide and they would see the generosity and the kindness being displayed towards them by others. The honor and the status they occupy in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is there so much emphasis on ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam? Why is there so much focus on the reward in the traditions of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam? Something that maybe is worth pondering over. And one of the reasons is that the human beings are stagnant. Human beings can regress. Human beings may not see the need to make positive development and change. And that's what we are required to do in life. We are required to progress, we are required to develop. Ya ayyuhal insan, Quran says, إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدْحًا فَمُلَاقِيهِ You are making these steps to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you meet him. Therefore, the movement of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, and it's a movement, because sometimes we say the journey of the Imam, the journey comes to an end, but the movement continues. And this movement that we're in, is a movement of positive transformation and development and change. The ziyarah of Sayyid al-Shuhada by Abdullah al-Hussein has to be a station of change for the human being. It's an embodiment of what the Imam السلام, wants from you and I, to be better human beings, to be better individuals in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, you see, the problem we have as humans is sometimes we like to continue as we are. People generally don't like to instigate any form of change in their lives because they're comfortable with what they're doing. And those great individuals, the prophets and the imams, they're reformists and they're those who came forward with a message of change. And they did so in incredibly delicate but emphatic fashion. Look at the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We find in 23 years he instigated the most dramatic change that the world has ever witnessed. And so the za'ir of Sayyid al-Shuhada must have the focus of coming for ziyara in honor of the Ahl al-Bayt, to display loyalty to Ali Muhammad, to remember the masaib of Ahl al-Bayt, to connect to Karbala on the 10th of Muharram, but also that they must be an individual seeking change, positive change in their life to get closer to Allah. So the question here in this short discussion is how? What are the things that we need to do? And the reason why this is important is because we see at the time of Imam Hussein salam, there are those who refused to change. They just wanted to stay as it is. Many of us have heard of Ubaidullah ibn al-Hurr al-Ju'fi. Imam al-Hussein sallallahu wa sallam alayhi on his way to Karbala in a place called Qasr Bani Muqatil, he saw this man and said to him, I'm inviting you to join me. I want you to take part. And this will guarantee paradise for you, salvation for you. This Ubaidullah ibn al-Hurr did not want change, did not want transformation. He was comfortable with his bubble and said, no, 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 I'm not interested. I don't want to join you. Take my horse. Similarly, we have, for example, 
some of the people of Kufa who did not want to rise with Imam al Hussein. So Imam السلام, instigated or wanted that change within their lives. Here we have this question, and that is how? What are the tools that I need to adopt in my life for change? Of course, one sometimes requires to read these scientific, behavioral, psychological studies, tips, uh, clips, <clears throat> all kinds of ways in which I can learn and understand the way my brain works. For example, there are those that have suggested that in order for change to take place, we have to understand the processes by which habits are formed. Because many a times these are habits. And these habits are related to how we see things and how we do things. And the brain becomes locked into a routine. So, we are told that there are three things that we need to focus. There is a cue, there is a routine, and there is a reward. So when I'm doing something, I'm normally, a cue is a trigger that tells your brain to go into an automatic mode. The routine is a physical, mental, or emotional process, and the reward is helps your brain figure out if this loop is worth remembering for the future. So you have the cue, you have the routine, and you have the reward. These three things, how am I going to work around them? For example, to perform my salah, or to perform salah to lay, or to recite ziyarat ashura, for example, every day. How am I going to do this? Well, you've got the cue that basically tells your brain to go into automatic mode. You make it something which is routine, but it's a good routine. It's better if you and I do something on a continuous basis rather than to do something as an on one off. Similarly, once it becomes this cue that enables us to connect to the routine and then to the reward because we can see the impact in, into our lives. This is just one model to think about, to draw and to write down what is my cue for something, how am I make, uh, going to make it into a routine and what is my reward for doing such a thing? Islamic recommendations for positive change are many. A za'ir of Hussein السلام, needs to understand that they can instigate change. There are a number of recommendations. Number one, know that change comes when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You and I all have bad habits. You and I all have things that we need to improve. I've come for ziyara. I've come to Sayyid al-Shuhada. I've come to Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. I've gone before that to Amir al muminin I go to Kardamain, I go to Samarra. Let's have focus. Let's write things down. Let's break things down. What is wrong with me? How can I improve? What are the things I need to look at in my life? Ask others. Sometimes we don't know. We need others to diagnose our own problems as well as ourselves. But the most important thing is I mustn't come for Ziara and think, okay, Ziara and that's it, leave. So, number one, asking Allah. Ask Allah and also ask him through the Ahl al-Bayt, through the Tawassul of Ali Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Secondly, know that change is not something with a click of a button. It's not something overnight. It takes time. So you need to have perseverance. You need to have patience with certain habits. Certain, for example, you don't wake up for Fajr. You're not going to all of a sudden, next day when you have determination to change, you're going to wake up for Fajr. Likewise, we need to have the self-awareness of the need to change because many a times we are ignorant of this. We do not want to be told that I have something that I need to improve. The younger we are, my dear sisters and brothers, the more likely we would like to positively develop ourselves. And we ask for consultation Amir al-Mu'mineen wa Mawla al-Muttaqeen Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam wa alayhi famously says Ma khaba man istashar Anyone who consults would not be disappointed. We need to also at the same time accept this criticism and don't take it personally. And we must never give up. Perseverance is absolutely essential. And sometimes together 
collectively. For example, we're not reading books. We're not educating ourselves. That could be a point of change after ziyara. To gain more knowledge, maybe do a book club, something that everybody comes together to perform. And so positively, you're rubbing off each other and encouraging each other as well. There are a number of ways in which Imam Al-Hussein and his remembrance Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, can help us to change. Number one, the majalis. The majalis of Imam Al-Hussein in Muharram and other times. How have they been emphasized by the Ahl al-Bayt? How important are they? Because they are stations of change. Muharram, many a times people seek because they have had enough of some of their practices and they want to improve themselves. The power of the love and ishq of Sayyid al-Shuhada Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam is something that has helped so many people improve their lives and progress towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The power of the tears and the shedding and the crying for Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam cleanses us from within. How many zuwar we have seen here in Karbala that have come and stood in front of the dhariyah of Sayyid al-Shuhada and Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and have cried and cried and has felt serenity, has felt tranquility, has felt completely different as if a load has been removed from them. As Imam al-Ridha sallallahu wa sallam alayhi was asked, Alastum kullukum sufunun najat, aren't you all the ships of salvation? He responds, Bala, of course. The ship of Hussein is vaster and in the oceans is quicker. So with Aba Abdullah, with the crying, with the majalis, with the ziyara, there is more potential to change because the heart softens, because you want to get close to him. And only the pure ones can get close to him. We need to shed the sins and the bad habits. And that is a great motivator and inspiration for doing so. He is a great role model for us. And we are aware that he said, I've come out for change. That's why my motive is to enjoin the good and forbid the evil. And so when we change, we are indeed forbidding evil and enjoining the good. Finally, his call, Hal min nasirin yansuruna, is there anyone to help us? It's for you and I. Also has a private message to you and I. Imam al Hussein says, will you help me? Because when you and I make that determination, that commitment, strengthen our willpower and self-control and move forward towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're answering the call of Sayyid al-Shuhada. The call that still reverberates around the world today. Therefore, in Ziyara, make a commitment. Stand before the grand mausoleum of Sayyid al-Shuhada. Say, I will change. I will improve. I can be a better person. And I will not stagnate because I love Hussein. I love Abbas. I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm going to go forward. And this is what Labbaik ya Hussein means. Labbaik ya Hussein means I will change and I will become a better individual. That's the message of Ashura. That's the message of Karbala. Assalamu ala Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein wa ala Aulad al Hussein wa ala Ashab al Hussein. Jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. سيد الشهداء حق فوق تايحا من دويب الحسين just like أم البني How can I not see Maynul Haramain? My whole life just only has one aim To be beside
the one that was slain Allahu Akbar, Ya Karbala Ya Rubi Ashik, Ziyarat Karbala Allahumma, Ya Rubi Ashik, Ziyarat Karbala